Welcome to Aging Gracefully. We want you to live a long, healthy life without regrets. And today, I am so happy to be with my sailmaker friend, George Thomas. And we are gonna talk about making sales and maybe more about sailing. Okay, fine. Tell the story. You were, I think, an engineer. Mechanical engineer. Okay. And I made sails as a hobby because I, as a young guy, I had a small sailboat and the sails always intrigued me. And so um, I started dabbling in it for my own interest. And there were no sailmakers between New York and Chicago. And uh, uh, working as an engineer, uh, the particular work I was doing was not overly satisfying, but I still was playing with my hobby. And my wife said uh, one evening, uh, well, okay, George, what are you going to be, a sailmaker or an engineer? And so I decided to give it a try, and it became my lifetime job. But now someone else owns this business, right. I and sold now it, you're the employee. I sold it to my, employ to my employees, and um, uh, they let me come and work for them. <laughs> <laughs> Gave them the responsibilities. So this is such a legacy that you have created. Uh, I think so. <laughs> but I know that I was their boss and now it's my turn to let them be my boss. <laughs> so fun. So I'd like to go into a little bit of the history about sailing. So you said you have always had this passion for sailing, mm -hmm. right? Tell me more about this because you were really a racer right that was the my first enjoyment we raced every saturdays and sundays and then as you got a little more experience you started to travel and race in other uh, regattas different areas and the same type of sailboat for yes, many I years yes i've been right? sailing the same type of boat uh for since 1950. <laughs> How different are things now? It's not all just no, hand it's, it's, sewn. It's much more high tech than it used to be. The original, when I started, uh, the sails were cotton and they were made of Egyptian cotton. And then the synthetics came along and everybody experimented with anything they could. Uh, the nylons, the dacrons, the acrylics, uh, and then as the years progressed, uh, th other things came along, uh, uh, Kevlar and uh, uh, carbon fibers and the uh, Mylar films. So everything's been tried. And today uh, it's the carbon fiber sails that seem to be the uh, fanciest for the racing sailor. The basic day sailing person still wants the Dacron polyester sails, which has proved very effective. Uh, originally, there were no computers, and the uh, sails, I designed the sails on paper, made a drawing of each sail to be made. That drawing was then laid out on the floor uh, with a chalk outline, and then the material laid over that chalk outline, and uh, and then sewn together, uh, brought back onto the floor, and the uh, outlines marked on it and cut, and uh, the sale was finished that way. Today, it's all computer designs, and the uh, sales are cut on a plotter cutter, which rolls out the material and cuts the panels out for you. And all they need to be done is then uh, put together with a double stick tape and the seams sewn on a machine. Sounds so simple. It sounds simple, but it's still labor intensive, <laughs> but not as much as it used to be. So you used to be on your knees, really down on the floor all the time. But Absolutely, you know, crawling back and forth and rolling the material back and forth. When you started, did you have those, the big, big tables like you have? No, in the there other were room? no table, you just used the floor. 
it'd be a wood floor and you used uh, awls to hold it, the material in place while you uh, drew lines on it. And uh, it, uh, it was just labor intensive. <laughs> And we put it together with double stick tape. Okay. And this is called high attack tape. So we don't even sew the seams. We can do a little grapevine stuff here. Sewing it. Well, actually, probably in the last 10 years. The heavier sails are uh, taped together with a less adhesive tape and then they're sewn. Okay. So, but the light sails you can get away. Here is a piece, of, two pieces of material, and you can see it or not. The tape's in there. You can try and tear it apart, it will not come apart. I don't care what you do. Now it's secure. Where we sew the seams on the heavy sails, and you can see there's long roller things, and it allows you to uh, take the sail and put it in here, and you have two rolls. You sew the seam, and you unroll it, and you get to the next seam and keep sewing until you're done with the sail. What What would be the biggest sail you've ever done? Can you? Probably for on a 60-foot boat, I mean. Um, actually, they, uh, I didn't make, but we've made here a sail for the Canadian uh, training ship that was quite minor. Sail cover, because the sails, uh, the thing that does a sail in is being in the sun, <laughs> which of oh. course they are all the time, but when you're sailing, but uh, during the week when you're not, the sun working on the rotting the sail. So you need a cover protection. Okay. And this is an acrylic material, Orlan. Mm -hmm. And you probably are familiar with the sweaters that are made out of acrylic. And it holds up in the sun fantastically. Uh, this one happens to be a, a, a covered background, a coated background, which is less expensive than the acrylic. Some people like to save money. So how long do these sails last? Uh, it depends on a lot of things. The Dacron sails, if you're just cruising, sailing, general light stuff, they'll probably last you 20 years. Okay. Uh, if you're racing, the racing sailor wants the sail really new and hold its shape. So probably it's out of racing condition after three or four years oh. but it's still going to be around for another 15 okay <laughs> but not for racing This is a, a one design class called the Star Boat, and it's 22 feet long, two person boat, and it's of course just for racing. There's no no luxury uh, below 
uh, bunks or anything. It's just in the boat. And of course, it's, you get wet. And um, yep. One of those is you? Uh, I'm the in the white shirt and the crew is in the red and he's, he's hiking, which you need to sit up on the high side to make the boat stand up straight. And, <laughs> it's called a bow guard and they put them on the front of their boat uh, to protect them. Ah. I think I have a picture. Uh, but, yeah, here's one with one. one. I mean, you, right, but that's where mm -hmm. that goes on the bow of the boat. Because when they're sitting out or waiting to get their boat out of the water, they're always bumping into something, so it protects it. The World Championships in Cleveland at Rocky River. And there were 98 boats there in the corner. And then you put this brass liner in that took the wear and tear from the rope. Time intensive. Oh, very time intensive. <laughs> it's all stainless steel press rings. Just knowing that you have to look at where you're going all the time and that you have different levels, you're stepping up and down and over all the time. It seems like that has really been helpful to you to, to keep your agility. I, I think so. And um, I think also uh, the uh, sailing I did was an athletic boat, and that all helps in keeping me loose. Plus, I ice skated quite a bit, and that helped a lot with my balance. Mm -hmm. My balance is still pretty good. Because you didn't just ice skate, too. Didn't you do dance skating Yeah, we as did well? some dance skating and mm -hmm. on a lower level. <laughs> Not like the TVs. <laughs> <laughs>